Yeah? Well, at least he's laying us. How about these sections over here? You had a good Christmas? Are you excited about what God's going to be doing this year? Let's all join hands and contact the living for a moment, shall we? Are you excited about what God's going to be doing this year? Is it? I'm really excited. I think we had a, a great year last year. Really thank God for all that he um, did amongst us throughout 2015. And I'm really looking forward to all that God's got planned for us throughout 2016. And I'm really excited about this new sermon series that we're starting off this morning. As Mark's already said, you can see from the screen that we're giving the title, Look. Everyone say, Look. Look. And the big idea, as Mark said, that underpins this whole series and the four messages that we're going to bring to it is very simply this. Where you're looking is determining where you're going. The things that you focus on, the things that you give your attention to are going to determine the direction that your life takes. How many of you believe that this morning? And the big picture, if you like, that I want to share with you, that I want to try and and ask you to to keep in your mind as we work our way through this, is that of a tightrope walker. Now, it, it isn't anything that I've ever done, but I have it on good authority that the key to being a successful tightrope walker is to always keep your eyes fixed on where you're heading. Never to look down. If you've seen some of those people when I was a kid, you sometimes see on the television people that would set up the, the, the tightropes across tall buildings in America or whether anyone, whether anyone ever tried it across Niagara Falls. I don't know whether, whether there were pictures that I saw in magazines and all that kind of thing. But apparently the key to being a successful tightrope walker is to always keep your eyes fixed on where you're going because where your head goes, there your body goes. And so naturally, if you start looking down and start looking all around you, guess what's going to happen? You're going to fall, aren't you? So you've always got to be looking towards where you want to be. But you know, that's not just true for walking a tightrope, is it? That's true across so many areas of our life. When you get in the car and drive your car, you spend most of your time, hopefully, looking through the big windscreen, don't you? Instead of the little one that's situated just up there because if you keep focusing on that one guess what's going to happen you're going to crash aren't you and so you want to be looking forward towards where you're going i think of runners in a race if you've ever seen them it's important for them isn't it particularly if they've been in a long distance race and they're coming around that 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 final bend as they've got the home straight in front of them their focus is very much upon the finishing line If they get caught out looking to the left or to the right, they're going to start losing speed. They're going to start losing some momentum. More importantly for them, they're going to lose the race. But it's important for them to keep focusing on where they're going because where they're looking is determining the direction that they're going to be taking. And so as we stand at the beginning of this new year, I want to ask you this morning, what are your hopes? What are your dreams? What are your plans for 2016? And I want to suggest to you that no matter what the answer to that question might be, that the key is to keep focusing upon those things. Because as you're going to hear us keep saying throughout these next four weeks, where you're looking is determining where you're going. And I think this is so important, isn't it, when we think about our own walk with the Lord. Hello? Because... Whatever things you might have answered to that question previously, I'm hoping that growing in your walk with him, that going deeper with God, getting to know him more personally throughout this year features right at the top of that list. And if there's a a verse that we've kind of uh, picked out to not only just underpin this series, but really to give us um, something as a focus for us as a fellowship throughout this year, it would be those first few verses in Hebrews chapter 12 verses 1 and 2, where the writer pens these words, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders. And that sin that so easily entangles is saying, let's, let's get ourselves free of all of that stuff, those things that keep holding us back. Let's somehow try and throw them off, cast them aside, and let us run with perseverance the race that's been marked out for us. And then depending on what version you're saying, it will say something like looking 
unto Jesus, fixing our eyes upon Jesus, the author and the finisher, the perfecter of our faith. Why don't we keep that together this year as a focus for us, that we keep coming back to that. We keep asking each other, how are we doing in terms of accomplishing this in our lives? There's four areas that we're going to have a look at during this series. That If you've read through Lakeside Life already, Mark's article, you'll see exactly where we're going with this. But there's four really important directions that we want to have a look at to, to help us move forward in our relationship with God this year so that we increasingly become disciples who are not only being transformed by God, but more importantly, we've been disciples who are going out and transforming the world around us. Because how many of you know that what we have isn't just for us? Hello, talk to me. It's not just for us, is it? God's been gracious and he's, he's blessed us, he's revealed himself to us, but it's not just so we can just sit back now all cosy and just wait for our ride to heaven. He's got a work for us to do, hasn't he? He's got a, a, a mission for us to accomplish. And, and here in this town of Southport in which we live and, and which we love, we, there are thousands and thousands of people who need to hear the good news of Jesus. Do you believe that? Yeah. Scores of people who God is looking to you and me to be his hands and his feet to go out this year into the world around us and share the good news in whatever way, shape or form that might be that he calls us to do. Next week, Mark's going to encourage us to look back and remember Jesus' faithfulness to us because as we look at that and as we recognize how faithful he's been in the past, that gives us confidence to trust him for our todays and our tomorrows, yeah? In two weeks' time, I'm going to be encouraging us to look around, to take the focus off ourselves for a few minutes and to start looking around at the needs of others that exist around us and how we can be Jesus' hands and feet to them. And then in the final message, we're going to be looking ahead being confident that he who began this good work in us will carry on to completion. Because he's faithful, isn't he? Yes. But over these next few minutes that I have this morning and in this first message, I want to encourage us all to look up today. Because we're never really going to go deeper with Jesus until we're continually looking up to him. And the verse that I want us to have a think of, do you want me to to think about, or the passage I want us to have a look at this morning is Psalm 121. So turn with me if you've got your Bible. We're going to read this psalm together. I'm reading from the NIV. You might have a slightly different version. But this is what the psalmist writes here, I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm He'll watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Now, in terms of the background to this psalm, it's pretty vague as to what we really know about it. We don't know for sure who wrote it. Some suggest Hezekiah. Other people suggest someone else. Neither do we know exactly what the situation was that this person was going through. But I think one thing that's clear as we read this is that this person was someone who knew the Lord. They were in relationship with God. And that they knew that when they found themselves up against things in their lives, the best thing that they could do, first and foremost, was to look up and to call upon Him. And I want to ask you the question this morning, why is it important for us to look up to Him? Why is it important for us to do this? And I want to suggest that the answer in a nutshell is because it's as we do this, that we begin to discover him in a much more deeper and a much more personal way, which I hope is the ambition, the desire of each and every one of us, if we believe us here this morning, that throughout this year we want to know him more. But I want to try and unpack that just a little bit and suggest three things to you over these next few minutes as to, to try and answer that question, why it's important for us this year to be looking up 
to him. And the first thing I want to suggest is this. It, it's that when we look up, that we recognize our need for him. When we look up, we recognize our need for him. The psalmist writes here, I lift my eyes up to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. I don't know what the situation was the person was going through in specific detail, but I think it might be a fair assumption to say that this person was in need. Hence them, them penning this. Maybe it was a looking back and it was a word of their testimony in a sense. Now they could have looked anywhere. They could have called upon others to, to come alongside them. Maybe they did. We don't know that. But I think what's really important here is that this person knew that the key thing for them to do, the key direction for them to be looking, first and foremost, was to look up towards God. And I want to suggest to you this morning that that is always the best place to start when we find ourselves going through situations in our lives, not just when we find ourselves going through difficult situations where we need some help, but, but always, every morning when we wake up, the first thing for us to be doing is looking up to Him and committing ourselves, devoting ourselves to Him for the day that lies ahead. But even more so, when we find ourselves going through situations, you see, there's things that we'll find ourselves up against in life where we need to know that we've got someone far greater than what that situation is to help us. Does anyone know what I'm talking about this morning? You see, when you're going through a crisis of health and the doctors maybe are saying that there's nothing else that they can do, where else do you turn? When the banker closing in on you, perhaps, the finances are running dry and you're not able to meet those loan repayments, where else can you turn? When your relationship has, has gone sour and the counseling hasn't worked, where else are you going to turn to to try and bring about a resolve in that situation? And that's not to say that counselors and doctors and medics, and we've got a number of those in our fellowship here, can't help us. We thank God for them this morning, don't we? We thank God for the incredible work that they do. Our nation, our society wouldn't be anything that it is today without the, the amazing work that they do for us. But we know, and even they would uh, um, recognize themselves, that at their very best, they're still limited. There's things that are beyond their scope of ability to help us. And when you find yourselves in those situations, who is it there that you turn to? You see, we need to know that we have someone whom we can call upon someone who is far greater, someone who is more able to come and speak into that situation and bring about a resolve and a remedy for us. And yet, you know, it's amazing, isn't it, where people will look to, where they will go, the, the people that they will look to, to try and find answers, to try and find help or relief for the different things that they find themselves going through in life. Oftentimes, they'll spend massive amounts of money to try and get help from a certain avenue. And yet, they end up in the process no better off than they were than when they first started. And you may know people like that. But you know, what's even sadder I've discovered is that that can be just as true for those of us who are followers of Jesus. That we can search every other avenue. We can go down this, this route or that route, go and seek help from here, there, and everywhere to try and bring some kind of uh, uh, resolve to the situations that we find ourselves going through before we do the, the important thing, what this psalmist tells us here, to look up to him in the first place. We only use him as a last resort when all else has failed. And yet his invitation is so clear to us, isn't it, in the Scriptures? He said, come to me, all you who are weary, heavy burden. Let me give you the rest that you seek after. He says, cast all your cares upon me because I really do care for you. He says, come and ask of me. Come and seek first my kingdom. See if I cannot give you all these other things that you're searching after. The invitation's clear for us to look up. That's not to say we can never involve friends or other people when we find ourselves going through difficulties. I think God gives them and brings them around us to help us in those situations. But that should never be at the expense of looking up to him first and foremost. And I want to encourage us all this morning on this first Sunday in this new year that no matter what things we might find ourselves facing throughout 2016, 
And let's be honest, we've been around long enough to know some of those things are going to be challenging for us this year, aren't they? Hello? We're going to have some good times, but we know there's going to be valley experiences for us as well. And I want to encourage each of us at the start of this new year that we're going to resolve in our hearts that the first thing that we're going to do, no matter what we might find ourselves up against, is that we're going to look up to him. We're going to look up to him because where does our help come from? It comes from the Lord. I will lift my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. We recognize our need for him. But another reason why I think it's important for us to look up to him is that when we do this, we actually begin to realize his power that's available to us. And we get reminded of that. Why does the psalmist look to the hills? Maybe it's because they served as something of a reminder to him as to the sheer magnitude of God. I don't know about you, but whenever we're driving up the M6, and normally just when we're going up to a camp in the summertime, and as you start approaching Cumbria, you begin to see the, the mountains in front of you, don't you? And just how, how huge they are. Now, I know they're only tiny in comparison to other mountain ranges that exist in different parts of the world, but for me who hasn't traveled that far, when I start going up there and I see these beautiful big mountains, I'm just reminded automatically as to how small I am in comparison to them, but how big God really is. Think of Isaiah chapter 40 and the verses that he writes there. Who has measured the waters in the hollow of his hand? Or with the breadth of his hand marked off the heavens? Who's held the dust of the earth in a basket? Or weighed the mountains on the scales and the hills in a balance? It's just such a great picture there, isn't it, of the, of the awesome size, the awesome magnitude of, of, of who God is. And so maybe the, the psalmist here was looking up because they reminded him, actually, they took his focus off himself. And they began to put his focus upon how big God really was in comparison to the situations he was going through in his life. But maybe there was a more important reason why he looked to the hills and to the mountains. Maybe that was because as a person possibly living in Jerusalem, which was not only situated on a mountain, but was also surrounded by mountains, this would have been a natural vista for him. So it's something that he would have seen every day of his life perhaps. And being a Jew, of course, the temple was the dwelling place of God on earth, wasn't it? And as we know from what the scriptures teach us, that the, the glory cloud that rested in the Holy of Holies signified God's presence among his people. And so when anyone in Israel perhaps looked towards the hills, no matter where they were, it wasn't just a reminder to them of how big God really is. But maybe in a kind of poetic sense, in a symbolic way, it was as if they were looking to the Lord himself. Of course, the temple being on a, uh, um, in Jerusalem, which is on a mountain, it would have signified the Lord's presence amongst them. And so as they looked up to the hills, it would have been symbolic that saying, God, I'm calling upon you here. I'm looking up to you. I'm relying upon your presence here to come and meet me in this situation. You see, the psalmist says, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. My daughter, Evie, is, is one of these arty types. She loves making stuff. And for Christmas, she had a number of little bracelet things that she can make and necklaces. And she loves spending her time doing that and, and, and being really arty. But, you know, she makes just a little knick-knack kind of things and she brings them to us and, it, and it's lovely. But anyone can do that, can't they? Really, if we're honest. But I love what the psalmist says here. He describes God as the maker of heaven and earth. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? Again, it just shows us, reminds us as the, the magnitude of who God is, who it is that we're looking up to here, and the, the incredible power and the strength, that, that creative ability that God has. And I don't know what that might mean for you, but I hope it will fill you this morning with an increased amount of confidence in God and in the fact that nothing is impossible for him, that it doesn't matter what situation or what circumstances might be surrounding your life or certain things that you're going to find yourself going through this year. But as you look up to him, not only 
will you recognize your need for him but you'll also be reminded of the awesome power that he has to come and speak into that situation we've already heard from Fran this morning as to how she believes that God has come and and and, and spoken into that 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 shoulder that was severely damaged and brought about the movement back again that she'd lost you see one thing I know this morning is that God is able now to him who is able to do immeasurably above all that we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us and his invitation to you and me today is to call out to him to look up and to know him afresh in our lives, to be reminded of the incredible power that he has and the ability to come and move in our situations. But then something else the psalmist encourages us with here is that when we look up, not only do we recognize our need for him, not only do we realize his power that's available to us, but we also receive his love for us. And I don't know about you, but again, for me, I need to know that. (laughs) Because there's times in my life when I might be feeling a little bit down, and I need to know and be reminded that God loves me, that God's in control of my life. Is anyone else brave enough to admit that this morning? That we all need to know this, don't we? I love the phrase that the psalmist uses here. The Lord watches over you. He who watches over you will not sleep. You see, that tells me so much about the way that he feels towards me and that the way he feels towards us as his people. I've got four children, as you know, and uh, I can remember with, with each of them when they were born, but especially with Elliot being our firstborn, that when he came home from the hospital just a couple of days old and uh, we had a Moses basket in the living room just situated alongside the settee and for, for hours each day, I would just sit there and just stare at him and just watch him. Now, there wasn't a lot to see because babies, as we know, when they're they're newborn, all they do is sleep, isn't it? They feed and they sleep and they feed and they sleep and they feed and they sleep. It sounds a pretty good life, actually, doesn't it? And I just constantly just, just watch him and, and just examine him, just look at his little button nose and the way his head was to the side and his hands were positioned and the way he was lying there. And of course, every time there was a, a little bit of a movement in his, in his basket, like we'd turn around and, and, and just be there, just checking out, making sure he was okay. And we had cats at the time as well, so I was ever conscious that none of them were go, just going to try and jump in there with him because it was a nice, cozy, warm place to have a little have a little nap and that was like that for the first few weeks and he'd he'd be in his Moses basket with us in our bedroom to start with but then of course we were really brave and we moved him out of our bedroom into his own room into the nursery into the cot and that was a whole different step of faith for us as as parents there if you've had children you'll know exactly what that's like and there were times when I just couldn't get to sleep because I'm thinking is he still breathing is he still alive? And every time like, you'd hear something, or if he'd sleep on that little bit longer than he had been doing, you'd think, like, you'd go in and check, wouldn't you, mate? Just to make sure that they're, they're still alive and that they're okay. And of course, by the time you've had the fourth, you'd oh, just leave them to it. You just let them, <laughs> they'll be okay. <laughs> but it's a lovely thought, isn't it? He who watches over you will not sleep. As I read these verses, I I get something of the same picture of how God, of how Jesus feels towards you and me today. That intensity of his love towards us that through the, not only the daylight hours, but also through the the nighttime hours, sometimes can be a reflection of of the darker times that we go through in our lives. That his gaze is always upon us. Don't you love that? That he's always watching over us with unwearied care and attention. Someone who will never for one minute take his eye off of us. In fact, he doesn't just watch over us. The psalmist tells us about some of the other things that he does. He won't let your foot slip. There's your shade at your right hand. He'll keep you from all harm. He'll watch your coming and going both now and forevermore, what, what does that say? There's never a moment in our lives when he's not with us. 
There's never a moment when he's not watching over us, where he's abandoned us in any way, shape or form. I spoke a couple of weeks ago about him being our everlasting father. And here again in these verses, we see some of those qualities being demonstrated again. Someone who's secure, someone who's reliable, someone who is totally dependable in our lives. You see, I think it's telling us here that there's no thing that can come into the life of a believer apart from that which God has allowed in the first place. And that brings comfort to me this morning, knowing that whatever 2016 is going to unfold and and unravel for me as these months go by, that everything has been through him first of all and that my life is secure in his hands. That doesn't mean I'm going to like some of the things that I find myself up against, but I know ultimately that he's in control. And it's important for us to know that, isn't it? Not just here, but to know it deep down in our hearts. And that he's going to work all things for good to those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. Do you believe that this morning? So where are you looking today? Or more importantly, who is it you're looking to? Who's going to be your focus for this year? Because like I've already said, that where you're looking is determining where you're going. And as we're thinking this morning about looking up just over these final couple of minutes, what we're really saying in effect is that we're going to make him the very focus of all that we do this year, looking unto Jesus. We're going to look up to him. What does that mean? That means we're going to spend time reading his word. We're going to get to know him deeper through his word this year. We're going to make sure church is a priority for us and connecting with others, coming together and celebrating, hearing testimonies, celebrating God's goodness amongst us. But we're going to spend time in prayer. We're going to keep prayer as a focus in what we do, that it's going to be right at the very center of who we are as a fellowship throughout 2016, just as it was throughout 2015. See, Mark said before that when Jesus' disciples came to him to ask him to teach them to do something. It wasn't how to worship or how to read the scriptures, but it was how to pray, wasn't it? And of course, we know he gave them what we know as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. You see, out of all of the things that they could have asked him for, I find it really interesting that they asked him to teach them how to pray. Because you'd have thought that having spent The last few years, walking with him, dining with him, resting with him, watching, observing everything that Jesus has been doing over the time when his public ministry began, that they would have learned how to pray. But it seems that this was something that they needed to be be taught how to do themselves. And maybe that's just a reflection of that out of all the things, all the disciplines that we have as believers today, that prayer so often, and I know it is for me, seems to be the one area that I struggle with more than any of the others. That doesn't mean I don't do it, but I do do it. But I know that I could do it more and I could do it better. And for us this year, I want us all to develop our prayer life with him, both individually, but also corporately. This is why the week of prayer that we've got coming up this week is so important, so significant for us, I believe, as a fellowship. And I really want to encourage you, but also lay out that challenge to you today. I know you're not going to be able to make every meeting But try and resolve it in your heart that this week you're going to try and get to at least one or two of those prayer meetings. Of course, we've got one tonight, our monthly praise and prayer. But then next Friday, we've got that half night of prayer. Let's make the effort that we're going to look up, that we're going to connect with him in a deeper way this year. Because, you know, out of all the the weaponry that we have as believers, this is the most powerful one in our arsenal, in our arsenal, isn't it? And yet it's undoubtedly the most underused. And yet it's through all this, it's through our prayer life that all these other things that I've mentioned begin to take place, that we begin to discover him more. We realize our need for him. We recognize and we get reminded of his incredible power that is available to us. It starts by looking up and connecting with him in this way. So where do we go from here? I wonder if the musicians can come back and just get ready to lead us in a final song and we'll go and enjoy some coffee together. Where do we go from here? If we're thinking about where we're looking determines where we're going. 
Where do we go? I want to encourage us all. Let's be forever looking up. Let's get praying. Let's get praying as a fellowship. Let's make it a real priority. You know, there's lots of things that are going to come our way and try and divert us and distract us. But if we can commit ourselves to this, I believe we're going to have the best year yet as a fellowship. That God's going to reveal himself to us more in greater ways. And God's already told us what he'll do if we'll do this, hasn't he? 2 Chronicles 7 and verse 14. If my people who are called by my name will what? Will humble themselves, will pray, will turn from their wicked ways, will, will, will seek after him. Then will I hear from heaven, I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Our town needs the healing touch of Jesus, doesn't it? We need the healing touch of Jesus more in our lives. But it's going to happen, guys, when, when we look at, when we connect with him, and when we make him the focus. Father, will you help us this year to look up to you? Not to look up to the hills, Lord. We don't have any around us here, but Lord, we want to look up to you because we know that for you, nothing is impossible. We know that for you, all things are possible. And together as a fellowship, God, we want to join hands. We want to join arms. We want to connect not only with each other, but we want to connect with you in a deeper way this year. And so, Lord, we just stand in here before you. If that's your desire, just stand with me. You're saying, Lord... I want to go deeper with you this year. I want to look up. I want to make you the, the very focus of, of who I am. Lord, as we do this, we're simply making ourselves available to you. As Mark said before, Lord, we don't want to get caught out doing things you haven't called us to do. But we want to be very focused and only doing those things which we see you doing. And only saying those things which we hear you saying. So, Father, we just present ourselves before you as those living sacrifices. And we say, come, Holy Spirit. Come and help us. Come and fill us this year. Help us go deeper with you. Help us keep our eyes fixed upon you. Help us, Holy Spirit, to get rid of all that stuff that entangles, all the stuff that holds us back. All the periphery stuff, Lord, that sometimes we give way too much time and attention place too much value on Lord help us see it for what it really is Lord to lay it to one side not give it as much of a high priority in our lives but this year Father we, we make you the focus of who we are and we just open ourselves up for all that you want to come and do and accomplish in us and through us and for us in Jesus name Amen Amen let's just finish with a song shall we and go and enjoy some coffee together.